In this episode, we're going from the hut to the top of Grand Paradiso. And here's where it gets a little bit more exciting and we share a bit more tips and tricks along the way. A little warning. This video is not a substitute of going out with a mountain guide or taking a proper ski mountaineering course. Be careful out there. Enjoy. Mm. Good morning, Dave. Morning. How ready do you feel, Dave? I'm ready. Oh, wow. Um, medium. I'll get there. Let's do this. Let's go and get some breakfast. Some of the Italian bread. I can, I can hear it now. Okay, be more organized in the hut. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's a nice, it's been a really nice clear night, so the snow's a lot more frozen. That's really good. Uh, but it might make skinning uphill a little bit more difficult. A bit more shit. So we might need the, uh, the ski crampons at some point. Yeah, so. I think so. Sometimes in June, ski mountaineering, yeah. you got to walk on the gravel. There's the summit. Oh, is there. it? Yeah. Oh, finally. That, that bump there. She's been a little cheeky hiding behind this big thing. Yeah. Nice and hopefully, yeah, from here we should have the skis on the whole way. So. Fingers crossed for that. The summit loop. So, yeah, great. Highly technical skinning here. We must keep the skis on our feet at all costs. We are 20 minutes in. It's still a bit too hot. So I'm gonna switch to a cap. Yeah, it's better to better to change early than get all sweaty and then you'll get colder later. So yeah, good idea. Get 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 the cap on. So I was thinking, this is almost the slowest one this morning. I feel like I should make myself like even a checklist on what to ditch at the hut to save weight. Yeah, I'd say what... go through your bag in the evening and, and figure out what it is you're going to leave behind and make yeah, a separate pile. That's an even better idea to be honest. And then everything's ready in the bag. Get up, have some breakfast, go to the toilet, brush your teeth or brush your teeth and go to the toilet, whichever one you prefer to. <laughs> So yeah, we've just come to this kind of steep icy bit. So it's a really good idea to have this, get the ski crampons on. So you might have already had them clipped to the outside of your bag, which you do. I quite like sticking them together like that. It stops them sort of rattling around, but then you just need to kind of pull them apart. The one that you're not using, stick it in the snow so it can't slide away. And there's kind of three levels of difficulty with putting ski crampons on. <laughs> oh, really? The hardest one oh, is doing good. it yourself on your ski it's kind of hard to see what you're doing but it goes goes in pretty easy like that mm -hmm. the next easiest way of doing it is me doing yours all right yeah if you want to kind of lunge forward like a telemarker so we can just help each other out there yeah that's pretty neat and and then the easiest one but potentially the least best one is to take a ski take the ski off and, and just stick it in there. But if you're putting the, the ski crampons on somewhere where it's quite icy and steep, yeah. it's better to kind of keep the skis on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really good idea to find somewhere flat like this before you get onto the steep slope. Yeah. So, so have a look ahead at what's happening and then put the crampons on early. And you know, the reason that we don't keep them on, you know, for longer is the fact that you get so much drag out of them and you'll you know you'll find that out in a second yeah but if you've already used them you'll, you'll get it but yeah, the yeah drag you kind of want them on for when you really need them and then off when you don't so yeah. 
Got to get good at taking them on and off. Ah, uh, but 2,250 just feels like a bit hard work. It's steep. I'm not blaming it on the altitude, not yet. Hey Dave, how do you think about water? Do you have like a strategy? Like you try to have one third now, a third later, um, something like that. Just try and drink a bit to, to thirst. You know, if you've only got a liter, you probably end up being quite thirsty at the end of the day. But as long as you're heading towards the hut, you know. Mm -hmm. What I do do is have two bottles though. Uh, I have two 500 milliliter bottles and then if you drop one or lose it or it breaks for some reason, you've got a backup. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a good, good idea sometimes. So we've done 710 dirt. And I'm gonna have my first slice of dried ecological mango. Freaking brilliant. Anyone want some? Yeah. Oh yeah. That feels good. Nice when the sun hits, isn't it? Yeah, wonderful. Very happy to be here. Uh, standing next to this cliff because I kind of like looking down things. That's uh, sick mountains. Super sick. Dave has said we're gonna rope up. Excited to do that. Never done that before. To use a harness while skiing. Yeah, so we're just about to come onto the glacier, so it'd be a good time to put the rope on. Yep. If you tie on to the end. Should I do it with an eight? Yeah, figure of eight. Does that mean I'm gonna be in the back then? Yes. That's the silliest looking figure of eight I've done. Are you happy if I tie it off with a stopper knot? Yeah, that works. So what, what generally happens on the glacier is somebody will put a foot through or put a ski through a crevasse. And if we've got the rope on already, we can kind of pull them straight out again. It would be highly unlikely that you take a big fall through, the creva through a crevasse today. It's really well frozen. But just having the rope on means that we can pull each other out if we put a foot through. So yeah, that's the idea today. So with the rest of the rope here, so what we're gonna do is we're go I'm gonna measure out seven arm bands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we were putting knots in the rope, we would put more in. So I'll show you what, what, how we'd put the knots in. So we'd put, I'd build another, another arm span, so that's eight, yeah. And that's about the middle of the rope anyway. Okay, so that's about 15 meters of rope. I'm gonna tie a little knot in there just to remind myself that's where I'm gonna, gonna take it to. What do we do now, Dave? Yeah, so we need to shorten the rope up so we've got about 12 to 15 meters of rope between us. And then maybe you might choose to put some knots in the rope as well to gain a little bit of friction if somebody were to fall in a crevasse. We won't do knots today, but I'll show you the knot that we're going to use uh, for that. But first of all, I'm going to tie in on the other end. So I'm going to tie in with a figure of eight. Make sure it's nice and neat. Yeah, and then we're going to pull each end really hard. Make sure that it's nice and snug like that. You can, can do a stop or not, it's not essential, uh, but yeah, it does neaten up the end a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is take some coils and tie them off. So this is something that needs to be well practiced and learnt. In fact, I might do a video on this on my YouTube channel, how about that? Do that. Wow, you're much faster than I've ever coiled anything. Alright, what are you doing now? Spread my arm and everything through. I'm going to tie off these coils so they don't strangle me. Yeah, around and down like that. There's several different ways of doing this. That's the way that I like to do it. And I like to clip that one off there. 
and then finish it. Nice little quo pitch. So just like that. And if we were to put some knots in, in the rope, uh, put them a little bit away from you. And all you do is tie a big figure of eight like this. Doesn't need to be super neat or anything. It'd be a little bit neater than that though. <laughs> and then all we're gonna do is wrap it around itself and then go back through the hole. And uh, I don't think there's any real name for that, but other than a big, a big knot. Uh, but the bigger the knot, the more friction it's gonna get onto the edge of the crevasse as it slides in. And it's the sole reason to, as you said, create more friction that the person falling into crevasse falls slower. Yeah, it's more slower or it could even stop them a little bit more. And it just means that the other person who's on the surface isn't getting as much weight onto them. Yeah. But the, the problem is, is then when you have to go and do a rescue, it's quite difficult to, uh, to pass the knot with the, with the rope devices and everything. Uh -huh. And the other, the other downside to it is if it pops over the, over the edge of the crevasse, into the crevasse, and then when you try and pull somebody out, it can really get jammed underneath the crevasse. So, yeah, I mean, I occasionally put knots in, but I'd say most of the time I don't use knots. Alright. Yeah, let's go for, well, let's go without knots. It'll get snagged up less as well. Yeah. Good plan. Thank you for that, Dave. No worries. Excited. Yeah. So, we're coming onto the glacier soon, and then, yeah, just good protocol to have the rope on uh, if you're on the glacier. So. Um, Obviously, when you're on skis, your weight is spread out a lot more. So it's a, it's a lot safer than it is walking around on boots. But yeah, best protocol if you're on a glacier, put a rope on and go and have help. Yeah. I feel like a dog on a leash. A little cheeky one. This is great. We're at uh, 3,700 now. We're starting to feel like above the, sur the surrounding mountains, at least. Feels like we're getting on top of the world. Feels great. But the steps are starting to feel a little heavier. So we're here, last bit up to the summit now, and there's a little bit of a little bit of cramponing and then a little bit of a scramble to get up to the top. So we're just going to change from using the static rope, which we had on the glacier, to using a dynamic rope that's going to be much better for climbing. Um, and then we'll come back down here, put the skis on and ski down to the hut. I'm gonna put my normal, my boot crap on for the second time in my life. First time I used them, I came with factory length strap. And that looked a little silly, so now I'll cut it off. I hope I cut it to a suitable length. Because it's only one lap around the foot, right? Yep. Should we go? Yeah, let's go. Mango first? Yeah. <laughs> More mango, powered by mango t today. Yeah, it's a bit of a win in bringing these ones. No one ever says no to mango. Yeah, axe in the uphill hand mm -hmm. with the finger down the, down the shaft like that. I didn't know about the, that grip. That's Cheeky. The easiest way to keep hold of your ice axe. Okay, so just as we're walking up here in cramp in our crampons, yeah. just make sure that you're lifting your feet up a little bit more and you're not getting them snagged on your pants. So just give each leg a little swing around the other leg and that should avoid you getting, uh, getting your points snagged on your pants. But other than that, yeah, all points going straight into the snow. Yeah. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And just nice and steady and slow, not trying to rush. What about body posture? Just nice and upright and over your feet. Using the ice axe for balance a little bit. <laughs> That's how long it took me to kick me in the pant. And we made a tiny hole. I'm going to practice your little swing around the leg a little bit more. So the ice axe you can Punch it into the snow with a pick. It's good for a little bit of balance, basically. That's like a ski pole. We're just gonna loop it into mm. this guy. That's how they work, they're cool. If you wait for me, we've got two now. Never seen these cool things before. 
So now I can take it out before you've set the third. Yeah, because we've got one. If you keep that one in there for a second. Yeah. All right. Got a little bit of a ladder to go up here. Really easy, just like a Via Ferrata, except no cables. So I'll go up first and then I'll just give you a little belay. Top. And then we'll be at the top. Well done, buddy. Thank you so much. Good work. Just got to the summit, 4,061 meters. Big boy Dave here. <laughs> and it's been beautiful. Summit. Loving the experience. Summit of the Grand Paradiso. Welcome to my office. You have a nice office, man. <laughs> Woo. What a happy time. Well Shit, yes, what a summit. You do really feel high here. 4,061 meters. So down we go. Oh, it's glorious. I don't know, 10 minutes up here. Can I pull it along a little? Yeah, you pull it along, yeah. I made my tummy tingle a little bit. It's quite a lot of exposure there. So yeah, we're just gonna get all our bits and pieces ready for skiing and then we're gonna get going. Almost ready to ski. Great, yeah. yeah, let's ski boys. Woo! <laughs> that was getting pretty enjoyable. It almost feels like three millimeters of powder now. Oh, that's it. down now and it's luscious wonderful forest and the stuff was feeling kind of lighter because of the enthusiasm that we're down that's good we had a great time in the next episode we're gonna look into all the stuff i learned from climbing and skiing my first 4000 meter peak we're gonna look into the excessive equipment i brought how to train for it and much more see you then <laughs>